welcome to another episode of the Found in Christ podcast. Yay! Today I have another very special guest with me. Her name is Wei Wei. Hello. And you know, thank you so much for making time today to be on the set. Yeah, it's an honor. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So we are going to talk about a few different topics today, and it's gonna get real juicy and exciting. Yes. So y'all gonna want to keep <laughs> listening all the way until the end, because today we are gonna talk about getting married young, yes, overcoming past hurts, and starting a business. Very exciting. Yes. yes. All right. So let's go to the first part first, where we are gonna talk about getting married young. So Wei Wei, you got married at twenty three years old, which is last yes. year. Um, yeah, in Western cultures, I guess it's considered not that young. But um, in Asian cultures, twenty-three years old, especially in Malaysia, I think it's considered very, very young to get married. Yeah. Yeah, but um, tell us more about you know what made you decide to get married at a young age. Wow. Okay. I think for me, in a nutshell, if I were to summarize everything into one quote, like mm-hmm. one phrase. It would really be because it's the decision that required the most faith, wow. but brought the most peace. Wow. And I think this was true for both of us. Mm-hmm. So a little backstory about me and my husband and how we met and everything. Yeah, we actually met the same week that I broke up with my ex. Oh. <laughs> oh, that is so scandalous. Like he, he claims otherwise. Like he said, we met before, but the mm-hmm. meeting that left the biggest impression. And I remember this meeting because um, we met. In the church foyer, and okay. then a friend introduced us, and I remember thinking Aww, to myself, "So he's a church guy." Yeah, yeah, he's a church guy. <laughs> church guys are great. Yeah, um, yeah, and I remember thinking to myself after meeting him, introducing everything, like, "Man, this guy is so cute." And then Aww, immediately, that's so sweet. <laughs> and then immediately after that, I remember this: the thought that came on that is, "You just broke up. Like, come on, like, stop it, girl. Like, stop being thirsty." Oh. So yeah, we met within that same week, mm-hmm. and. Um, after that, we became colleagues. Like I worked in church for a bit, and yeah. we worked under the same department. That's where we became friends. Oh, and the spark started. The spark started because I wrote a song, and then a friend actually convinced me to go to him to help produce it because he works as an audio engineer, okay. sound engineer. Okay. Honey, if you're watching this, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he he works as in the audio field, so I went to him, and then we worked on a song together that I Aww. wrote, and then we started spending a lot more time. Oh, that is like <laughs> that is like a movie. That is, is like high school is. musical. It is like you're Gabriella and he's Troy, and y'all are just spending time writing yeah. music together. <laughs> oh, um, that is so sweet. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and he he caught feels. And little fun fact, that song actually became the song that I walked into when we both got married. Oh, yeah. that's so beautiful. Yes. Um, oh my gosh. So I think that's he caught feelings first, mm-hmm. and then he asked me out, and it was a very funny asking me out moment because. Okay. Um, you know, in WhatsApp, when you record a voice note, you can see the other person recording it. Yeah. If they're recording it, so I opened my phone, and his top, like one of the top chats was his, because we were talking about some stuff. And yeah. then I opened it, and saw he was recording something. So I was like, okay, let me just wait. And half an hour later, I opened it up, and he was still, <laughs> he was still recording. And then so the, you did like so many tries. Yeah. It was like, hey, hey, girl. Oh no, no, no. Hey, <laughs> hey, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think it ended up only being like three minutes long. Mm-hmm. But he, it was him actually asking me out for oh, coffee. Oh, that's so sweet. Not sweet, cause I rejected him. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So like until this point, it's like we are really good friends, but I didn't feel ready enough to actually go out with him for coffee. Okay. So I rejected him. Like walk me through the timeline. How long ago was this from? Cause you said you broke up with your ex, and yes. then you met him that very same week. Yes. So how long did you guys take to like bond and for him right. to finally ask you out? I think we started working together in. I broke up twenty twenty January first, okay, which is New Year's Day. Okay, yeah, I met him that same week, and then twenty twenty one we started working together, and then twenty twenty two in April was when he asked me out for coffee, and I said no. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it was actually a really long like period of time. Yeah. So when you guys met in twenty twenty, you y'all weren't close yet. No, not really. I thought he was cute, but like it was just an acquaintance. It was just an acquaintance, okay. and honestly, like he was not my type. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Like <laughs> <laughs> you are my type now. Um, but yeah, he he was he was really like not my type because, like I think at that time, and can I just say something? Like sometimes your brokenness makes you desire things that, 
like if you were whole, you wouldn't desire. Wow. Yeah, like I think my biggest advice for people out there mm -hmm. who are looking for partners is really like a little bit of a segue. Yeah. Is really get whole, get whole before you get married. Wow. Because when you're broken, sometimes we go through cycles of dysfunction that oh, bring us through the same dysfunction over and over and over again. Yeah. And sometimes you're drawn to certain toxic traits not because they're good or desirable, but because it's the environment that we are so used to and we are so oh, conditioned wow. as people to. So I think, yeah, like for me, um, the reason why I said no was really because I felt like there were a lot more things I needed to work through. At that time, mm -hmm. I was getting over my second ex. Ooh. Not even ex, it was a situation shit okay. in 2021. Okay, so yeah. it was in between. Yes. So y'all so y'all you had a situation ship and then y'all were still were friends and getting close at the same time. Yes. Okay. I think back then like he was also still in another relationship. Oh really? Yeah, so we both like we were just friends. Like we had no feelings or anything towards each other. It was mm -hmm. only later towards getting to twenty twenty two that we started, you know, spending time on the song, getting to know each other, oh. high school musical, not really know. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it was kind of like, in the end, y'all got together um, in the perfect timing because it was when both of you were already over, like, both of your exes. Yeah, and the story of how we got together, of how I finally agreed to go out with him is really, really funny. I don't think I actually told you this in person. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Um, I remember after he asked me out and I said no, I had actually written down a list of things that God has spoken to me about, my significant other. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of girls, like I know a lot of girls out there who do that, where they're like, God, I want a guy who is like this, like this, like this, like yeah. this. And I think the danger with that, a little segue, is that you end up building a man that doesn't exist. Oh, wow. Yeah, you end up building a man that doesn't exist. You end up building a man that is like, oh, in your wildest dreams, it's so perfect. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah, like no one in no, no one, one out is there. perfect. Yeah, no one out there yeah. is perfect. And I think like sometimes And we all start somewhere. Yeah, it's true. And it's it's good to know what you want yeah. in a guy, but like the human heart is so deceitful. And sometimes yeah. like when you're working through your own brokenness, when you're working through the things that you're still struggling with, mm -hmm. you may write down like very toxic traits that you think you like, you mm -hmm. think you're attracted to, but it's really not that. It's really just yeah. the environment that you're so accustomed and to. And the lens of brokenness that you're seeing yes. it too. Yes. Yes. So wow. yeah, like I like for me, for example, I used to think that I like guys who are a lot more like, who know what they're doing, like super macho, macho man. Like that, I think like that was the type that I gravitated towards. But then I realized it was really because like of a lot of brokenness in the area of fatherhood in my life. Oh. Like I had a great dad, but I think growing up, he wasn't really that present. So for me to compensate for that, like yeah. I wanted a guy who was able to like tell me what to do in my life, oh. you know, who was more domineering and controlling. But I didn't know that until okay. I got whole <laughs> and realized like, oh, it's actually my brokenness that's informing me wow. that this is the guy that's good for me. And by whole, you mean like you found healing in Jesus yeah. and you went through like that whole process of healing with Jesus. Yeah. So you could no, you no longer had to see through the lens of brokenness. Yes. Yes. Okay. And honestly, a lot of your father and mother wounds will inform how you choose your partner. Oh man, that is yeah. so deep. I feel like I can relate to that. Because yeah. I feel like I've struggled with father issues a lot um, during my life as well. Like, my, my father was there, you know, my father's still there. and um, But I didn't really feel loved by him. Mm. And I had no idea that it was something I struggled with. Because I've, I've gone through relationships after relationships since I was at a very young age. Mm. And I had no idea why I couldn't be single. I was just like, I just want to be with the next person. I just want to have the next person. And, mm. It's, mm. and, and later on, I realized, um, Holy Spirit revealed to me that it was because I felt like I wasn't loved by my own father. That's why mm. I kept trying to find the love from all the wrong places. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so like eventually you, you said that you said yes to Russell. Mm. What made you finally say yes? Oh, wow. Okay, so after he asked me out, I started to notice him a lot more. And I mentioned a list, right? Yeah. So I wrote on a list of what God spoke to me about my future spouse. Mm -hmm. So after the second, situ the second guy, like the situation ship ended, Yeah. I was really like asking God, like, okay, what do you want from my husband? Like, forget what I want, because what I want has led me to all of these yeah. like situations that were inherently painful. Yeah. So I started asking God, okay, what do you want from me? Mm -hmm. What is on your heart for me? Like, what's the kind of man that you have for me? And I wrote that instead. Like, I literally just taught my old list. Okay. And I just wrote a new one based on wow. what God said. And then, yeah, it was like, I even wrote a few things that 
I knew that, you know, like I, I felt like I was called to art. I felt like I was called to creativity and mm-hmm. I wanted someone who could go in that journey with me. So yeah. I wrote certain things to do with that. And then after he asked me out, I started noticing like little things off the list that he would fulfill. Aww. Like one week after another, like little things that he would he would fulfill. And it would be so freakishly coincidental wow. that I felt like he was reading my journal. Wow. Yeah, so because it happened like one week after another week, after another week, after another week. Wow, so slowly yeah. like God was just showing you that this man is checking off what I told yeah. you that would happen. Yeah, but the funniest thing was all this while I'm like, cannot be like, he's not my type, he's not my type, he's not my type. Mm. But all the while God was like, he's my type. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wow, yeah. such a beautiful story. Yes. Yes, and why don't you walk us through like how you got over like the brokenness and went through like the healing that made you finally be able to have a happy relationship with Russell? Wow. Um, honestly, I feel like there's a lot of, like, don't get me wrong. I yeah. really love like, you know, all the Christian podcasts, all the Christian things out there. And I think yeah. they're really good. But I feel like a lot of the times we as Christians, we tend to slap the band-aid of like, just pray it away or like, just yeah. read the scriptures. And those are yeah. good. Those are great. But for me, what I really learned in that season was to grieve, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, the Beatitudes, there's one verse that said like, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Mm-hmm. And I went to God and I mourned. And wow. the beauty of that verse is that it's only in this side of eternity, like here, that God can introduce himself as comforter. Because in eternity, he doesn't need to comfort us with anything, right? So mourning, really just grieving and going to God and pouring my guts out and being honest. And I had to really learn that um, God had to be my first love. God had to be um, everything that I needed and Mm -hmm. everything else that I felt like I lacked. I needed to learn to find it in him. But I think for me, it was really just learning to mourn, learning to go to God to grieve, wow. and learning to let Him um, fill up the empty spaces in my heart, like mm-hmm. the parts of my heart that I always wanted a guy to fill. Wow. Where I feel like sometimes as girls, we, we do this thing where, you know, I'm not saying all of us, right, but I did this a lot where it's like, I believe that if I found a perfect guy, my life would be perfect, mm-hmm. right? If I had this one guy who would take me to these nice places and all that, like, I would be okay. Mm-hmm. When, in actuality, it was, I was lacking God. I was lacking, yeah. like, love within my life. Yeah. And God is love, right? Yeah, and, mm-hmm. like, without Jesus, everything else is meaningless. Yes. Like, you can never be completely filled, like, without Jesus in your life. Mm. And it's the lie of the sacred object as well. We always tell ourselves, like, um, once we reach this level, once we have this thing, then we'll be happy, we'll yeah. be satisfied. But er- oftentimes, when we get this thing, we're still not satisfied. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I'm glad that you know you found Jesus before you met Russell. Like, it, yeah. was, it was in the whole process together as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like, one really brain-altering thing, like, one experience that I had that really changed my perspective on God and love is that I think the week before, um, I think Russ asked me out officially. Mm-hmm. I was sitting down with God and I just remember him saying this like, you, you can't be any more loved than you are now. Aww. You can't. So even if this guy comes into your life, even if this guy um, takes you out and does all the nice things that you want him to do, yeah. you can't be any more loved than you are right now. Yeah. Because the greatest love story of all of his story was already told on the wow. cross centuries ago. That's the right. greatest love story has already been told. And there's no other love story that's greater than that. That's right. And for me, it was getting to a place of realizing, like, I don't need this man to complete me. Yeah. This man can compliment me. Yeah. This man can walk with me. And I will do the same for him. But I am already whole and I am mm-hmm. already fully loved. Wow. Yeah. And I think that makes the most fulfilling relationships like when god Mm. is at the center because then both of you are drawing from god to fill you you are drawing from god to fill you and give you strength and going to god for healing Mm. that you won't be relying on each other for healing yes and i think a lot of the times like me in my childhood i always believed that like oh like yeah like if i meet the right guy everything will be fine and he will fix me and he will do all the right things Mm -hmm. but like we it's actually because Deep down inside, I knew I needed a savior, mm-hmm. but I thought that savior was always going to be men. Wow. Right? But it was that one man, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yes, that one man, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so amazing. I love how God like allowed you to change the brokenness into so much beauty. Mm. And like, you know, since you had like 
a cycle, I mean, of broken relationships in the mm. past and then going into this relationship with Russell, like, how did you kind of know that this was actually a God thing rather than, like, another, you know, broken relationship? I think it was the confirmations. And I feel like as Christians, a lot of the times, we hype it up where it's like, oh my gosh, I had this sign, and oh my gosh, I had that sign, and therefore it yeah. must be God. And I'm not saying that that's not true. Yeah. But I think... Um, sometimes we chase after signs more than we chase after the person giving the signs and that's God's heart. Yeah. And for me, like I prayed for confirmation. Um, I prayed for um, yeah, the list to be checked off, which mm -hmm. it was. I prayed for peace, which yeah. I got. I prayed for confirmation through people, which I got. But I think the biggest confirmation that I had was really him revealing his heart to me through this man. Wow. Yeah. So like for me, it was realizing that God is a God who... You know, like James said that he's the father of lights and every good and perfect gift comes from him. It yeah. says that if, like in, I think Matthew, I, like quote me if I'm wrong, but there's one of the gospels where it says that he's a good father and which child, if asked for a fish, you would give him a snake, yeah. you know, that one. And I realized that a lot of the times I was second guessing God mm -hmm. when through this guy, like through this man who is like checking all the boxes, being so nice to me, I thought like, this is fake, like this can't be real. Yeah. Like, it was God revealing his heart. And I think him showing up as a good dad, him revealing himself as a dad who wants to give good gifts, and him giving me that peace um, was really, really what brought me to a place of, okay, like, I think this guy's the one. Wow. Yeah, but honestly, like, peace is such a big factor. Yeah, it is, yeah. definitely. I think, like, if you like that peace in, the, in a relationship, it's definitely better to... Um, get out of it rather than like keep it going right because mm -hmm. um, the peace that comes from God that supernatural peace yeah like it only comes when you know we're following like what God wants yeah and I would say like check the fruit yeah check the fruit because like I think the biggest mistake I've made in the earlier two like relationship situationship mm -hmm. was that I thought the fruit was like oh but they pray but they yeah. speak in tongues like, yeah. but they lead but the fruits of the spirit is not whether or not you speak in tongues, whether or not you pray, the fruit yeah. of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. It's all of these things. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes we idolize charisma over character. Wow. Right? Like, yeah. yeah like, oh, checking the fruits. That's such a yeah, good one. Yeah, like, check, check the fruits. Like, even in a friendship, like, before you guys date or do anything serious or have that conversation about marriage, check the fruits. Like, when you're with this person, like, are they loving? Like, is there joy in this mm -hmm. relationship? Is there peace? Is yeah. there kindness? Is yeah. there like all of these things that God says well, are good fruit. That's such a good measure because I think like um, there's so many people who can also fake things like you know mm -hmm. um, I've also dated people who, who claim to be Christians who seem to be like my human eyes told me that oh they're praying for other people oh they're serving in church that's what my human eyes told me but mm -hmm. in my spirit I didn't feel peace that's number one mm -hmm. and number two the way that they were treating me behind the scenes was really really terribly so that's like not the fruits of the spirit like that's mm -hmm. not showing that they had the fruits of the spirit because you can be doing all these things guys Men and women can be doing all these things, serving in church, you know, even preaching or whatever. But if you don't have Jesus, if you don't genuinely have Jesus in your heart, all that means nothing. And it can all be like a performance as well, you know, not trying to act uh, like judge anyone. But, but there is these things happening around and, mm. you know we want to follow God's peace and we want to also, um, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to show us like whether there's actually fruits in their lives that show that they genuinely, genuinely follow Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I think to add with that, there was a verse that really shook me where it's, it's the one that went like, in those times, like people are going to go to Jesus yeah. and be like, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We, we did miracles in your name. We casted mm -hmm. out demons in your name and Jesus is going to go like, but I don't know you. Yeah. And they called Jesus Lord and yeah. they did all those things. And, in 1 Corinthians, um, 1 Corinthians 13, the one about love, yeah. where it says, like, you can be a mat 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 matter? Matter? Martyr? What? <laughs> the, a martyr. Martyr. A martyr. Okay. <laughs> my English, oh my gosh. Um, you can be a martyr and be burnt at stake and not have love. You can, wow. you can do miracles and not have love. You can prophesy and not have love. Yeah. And you will be like a clanging symbol or resounding gong. Yeah. Like, Corinthians says that we can do all these things without love. It's yeah. possible to prophesy without love, to have faith without love, yeah. you know, to sacrifice yourself without love. Yeah. And I think like 
you know, the reason why Jesus said these people didn't know him was because they didn't know love. Yeah, wow. Because God is love, right? Yeah. And he who doesn't love his brother doesn't love God. Wow. And I think it's not whether or not you're able to do all those things, you know. These things are good. We are not saying that they're inherently bad and you shouldn't mm-hmm. do them. These things are good. But the measure of good fruit is still love, joy, yeah. peace, patience. That's and right. love, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. now that we're talking about marriage, which is like the highest form of love expressed yeah. between a man and a woman, like a covenant, right? I feel like if this person is able to do the, everything that the First Corinthians 13 says, like love yeah. is patient, love is kind. Like one great tip that I learned is to put their name there. Mm-hmm. So it's like Russell is patient, Russell is kind. Aww. You know, like, and see if this person really does have those fruit, have those qualities. Mm-hmm. Then you know, like, okay, this person yeah. really loves me. Like, this person really embodies love. This person really loves God. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think also, like, not to forget that we're all also a work in progress. Mm. So we're not expecting you to, like, go date someone who's already perfect, who's already, like, you know, ha- has it all together and, like, always patient, always kind. Because yep. I think we stumble as, as well at times. Like, we're not always patient. We're not always kind. Yeah. But the most important thing is their heart. Like, is their heart really for Jesus? Like, is their heart really wanting to, you know, humble themselves before God and want to change as well and want to be, like, taking on the nature of God and wanting to take on and have the fruits of the Spirit? Because the heart is very important. If their heart is not towards God and their heart is, you know, they don't want to go into God's presence and they don't want to seek God on their own and, like, be transformed on their own, like, with God, then, like, then it's all just an act. Mm. Then it's all just meaningless at the end of the day. Yeah, I think I can really agree with that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like, you know, since since getting, you know, married and everything, it all happened so fast for your life. Like, yes. was there <laughs> any like sort of opposition or anyone who said anything against it? Oh, for sure. <laughs> like, for sure. Um, I've had like a couple people try and advise me against getting married. Mm-hmm. And these are well-meaning people. I'm not saying that like they're bad and they're out to yeah. get me and they don't want me to be happy. Yeah. But I think sometimes people can advise um, from their soul and not from the spirit. Wow. I feel like sometimes people That's can... That's so deep. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, it's true. Like I think a lot of the times like people can advise from a place of fear instead of faith. Yeah, like from their own traumas. Yeah, and like... A lot of the times, like, it's not because they don't mean well. Mm -hmm. It's not because, like, you know, they don't love you or anything. But, yeah, like, really, what good can come out of fear? What Mm -hmm. good can come out of that place? So I've had had people advise me, try and tell me, like, you're still so young. Um, You have your whole life ahead of you. Are you sure you want to do this? And I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Because it forced me to dig deep into my own convictions. Mm -hmm. But for sure, there are always going to be people who yeah. try and talk you out of it, regardless of whatever you choose. If you get married late, they're going to be like, are you sure? Like, you're not married yet. You know, like, how mm-hmm. about kids? You're not going to be able to have kids. Yeah. If you get married early, you're like, are you sure? You're so young. Like, are you sure you want to, like, just throw up your freedom like yeah. that? So regardless of whatever you choose, people will have something to say about That's it. That's true. But the most important thing is, what does God say about it? That's true. And it always goes back to make the decision that brings the most peace but requires the most faith. Wow. Always go, Always go back to that. Amen. Yeah. So how did you, like, reconcile that? Like, you know, how did you wrestle that with God? Cry a <laughs> lot. Cry a lot on my floor. And I had to really go to God again and again and again until mm-hmm. I felt that there was no more doubt within me. Wow. And it's not a one time I go to God and then everything is fine. Thing. Yeah. It's a constant, anytime I feel shaken, anytime I feel down, I have to go to God and be like, are you sure about this, God? Do you want me to get married now? Mm-hmm. Um. Funny thing about the timeline, he yeah. wanted to get married. He asked me out on a date in, I think, November 2022. And yeah. then he wanted to get married by the end of 2023. I said, give me two, three years. You know, like, I'm still young. I'm still, like, a baby. <laughs> like, give me two, three years. Um, and then I remember, I wasn't praying about this, by the way. Yeah. But I remember that I was just, like, taking clothes out of my closet, doing my own thing. Mm-hmm. Then I heard the Holy Spirit go, like... By this time, in 2023, you would have already been married. Wow. And I felt, I felt the peace to go ahead with it. I just wow. felt the peace. And there is nothing in this world that can masquerade as God's peace. You can't tell me that you feel 50% peace, 50% no peace. It's either wow. you feel peace or you don't feel peace. Wow, that's so true. Yeah. Yeah, that's so incredible. I think that 
really God was like on the journey with you and like yeah. assuring you every step of the way. Yeah. And and He paved the way because He commanded it, so He paved the way. Mm-hmm. So you can see that evident in like God's hand over your life. Wow. Yeah. And and like you know, in this whole new chapter of your life, then um, getting married young, like what do you learn so far, and how are you enjoying it? Um. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage, I had this, okay, so, ah, uh, I might cry. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Um, like I said earlier, like, marriage is the highest form of expression of love, oh. commitment of love between mm-hmm. a man and a woman. And it is in this that God says, like, hey, like, marriage is how, is a metaphor to Christ and the church, right? Yeah. We've heard that reference a lot. Um, at least for me, I've heard that reference a yeah. lot. And both of us, like after you get married, you are the closest reflection to Christ and the church that people yeah. around you are going to see. Yeah. And I think the greatest thing that I've had to learn was really just like, wow, giving up what I thought was right and giving mm-hmm. up like my preferences, giving up like, no, I want this my way for, okay, God, no, what do you say about it? It's a lot of dying to self. Yeah. It's a lot of like, really just crucifying the flesh Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i think the reason why i said i felt like crying or the reason why i felt so moved by that is really because um the memory that comes to mind is um (laughs) the memory (laughs) that comes the memory that comes to mind is after my situationship uh with the second guy and i remember saying to god like i don't ever want to get married Mm -hmm. i don't want to get married i don't want to be together with another person you guys suck like men are trash (laughs) i'm sorry i'm sorry (laughs) um yeah and i remember just being so sure i didn't want to get married i was so heartbroken yeah and i remember that the day that i got married i remember the presence of God being so strong. Wow. And him reminding me, like, even when you gave up on yourself, like, I never gave up on you. Oh, man. And... You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm sorry if this is all over the place, but that's, the, okay. that's the most, like, poignant thing. And I remember this after, like, our first date. And I remember this, like, after our first date. And it's like a little Easter egg. Oh, it's so hard to talk. It's like a little <laughs> Easter egg that God hid from me. I remember in college, before any of my relationships happened, I remember in college and I was walking past the river of life and I remember just talking to God, being like, God, I want to come back here with the love of my life. Aww. And after my second situation, relationship thing, like after that, I gave up on that. I was like, you know what? No, like I'm never going to go on a date ever again. I'm never going to go out with a guy ever again. Mm-hmm. And then for our first date, that's where Russ took me. Aww. And he never knew about this story. He never knew. I never told him. And I forgot about it until everything was over. Wow. And then a few months passed. And then I looked back at my journal and God told me, hey, do you remember when you said that? And the reason why I said the biggest thing that I had to learn was like really dying to myself and crucifying my flesh yeah. was that I did not want to get married. Like it was in my preference that yeah. I would not get married. I don't want to fall in love again because of how hurt I've been. But choosing God and choosing Christ and yielding to Him meant, okay, God, I accept that in your plan, like, this is a good thing you want to give me. And I'm going to try my best to receive it from you. Yeah. Yeah, so the biggest thing that marriage has taught me is really dying to self because your spouse reminds you to do that daily. Yeah. And choosing God's preference is God's purpose over your preference, but also how faithful He is. Yeah. Yeah. That's so incredible. Like, I think the insights and the lessons you've got, um, you know, at su- such a young age, but at such high maturity, is something that maybe people take even years to realize that this is really what marriage is about. It's about reflecting Christ and His church. It's about, you know, showing that, Christ is supposed to represent the husband laying down his life for the mm. church and you know the church being a spotless bride for the for Jesus and mm. also um you know laying down them themselves for Jesus as well mm. so it's just a beautiful representation of that like marriage is not supposed to be a power struggle like what um i think a lot of society views right now like oh it's between men and women a competition you mm. know or like 
who's supposed to be doing what. No, it's supposed to be an, a, a competition in which you outserve and outlove one another. Yeah. And see how much you can love with the love that you receive from God. So I think mm. that's so beautiful that you have such a deep revelation just by being married for like several months. Three months. Yeah. Yeah. I think not even three months. Like our third month is coming up soon. Wow. Happy months to us. Amen. That's so <laughs> yeah. incredible. And like, I just want to also ask you, um, <clears throat> I think like Malaysians especially, they will probably say things like, oh, you're like, you're so young la, and then they, they usually have this stigma that says that if you marry young, the chances of like divorce are like higher, you know, things like that, which I think wow. is not true. But how, <laughs> how would you like address that? Wow. Um, let me think about this very carefully because I don't want to offend any aunties and uncles out there that are not watching. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I would say, first of all, in the context of eternity, what is age? Wow. Um, and second of all, yes, there is maturity, there is wisdom. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things us young people can learn from the older audience that might be potentially watching this. Yeah. And I'm not saying that we have it all together. Definitely. But I would say, again, like, go where the peace leads you and make that decision with faith. Mm -hmm. And, like, getting married young isn't a setback. Yeah. If God is with you in it. Yeah. Come on, like in the Bible, like Jesus' mother, she married young. Yeah, she was a teen. I mean, we don't cond condone that <laughs> right no, now. But don't get married if yeah. you're a teenager. But but actually marry, like if you if you look at all the historical like research, research and all that, she was a teen when she mm. gave birth to Jesus and got married. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of the times, like young people out there, they're talked out of giving birth to their purpose mm -hmm. because well, of, yeah, like, are you old enough for that? And I think, honestly, the point is not whether or not you're wise enough or mature enough to make those decisions. It's that you're not. If not, then if you're so capable of making these decisions, then you wouldn't need God. Yeah, he chooses right. the well, foolish, the shame, the wise. Wow. Right? And I do think that there are some decisions out there that we as the younger generation need to own mm -hmm. so that a God that has it all together can show up. Wow. Yeah. I love that. I think that um, it's also a line in the Bible, right? Do not let anyone look down on you because you're young, mm. but set an example for others in faith, in conduct, and in speech. Yeah. Yeah, so you know what? Like, it's okay if you're young, like if you're in your 20s, like, and you're trying to make good decisions in life and you're trying to figure things out. Like, don't let all the pressure get to you. Like, really listen to what God says. Because sometimes, like, um, even making big decisions, like business decisions, like the younger generation are trying to figure that out too. And, mm. and it's really ultimately like looking to God for wisdom and of also like, I mean, humble your, yourself. It's okay to ask help from older generations, um, but also like ultimately listen to what God says as well. I, yeah, I feel like if I have, if you did not hear anything that we've said for the past, I don't know how long it was, <laughs> just walk away with this one statement. Like, make the decision that requires the most faith but brings the most peace. Amen. And just go with that. Like, don't rush to get married or don't delay the marriage that God has for you. Don't fight it. Don't wrestle with it. Mm -hmm. Don't, like, push it back. Just, yeah. if it brings peace, if it's something that God has spoken about, yeah. just go with it. Just yeah. make the decision. Yeah, I'm not condoning right. everyone to get married young. It's not for everybody. Everyone's on a mm -hmm. different journey. That's right. Please don't come at me and like fight me on Instagram. I'm not, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is if it's a decision that brings peace and requires faith, yeah. and if it's something that God has spoken to you very specifically about, like me, like he told me like when I was going to get married, mm -hmm. honor the word of God, honor what God says over your life. Yeah. Yeah, that's so beautiful. I love that advice. Um, and you know, like, I know that you started a business recently. Why don't oh. you tell us more about that? Wow. Okay. I started a business called Let There Be, inspired by what God said when he formed the world. Like, let there be light. Love and it. all of those things. And in a nutshell, it's a business that sells art cards and stickers. And yeah. it, She's very talented, by the way. Uh, so go check her out. It. I will be linking it below. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for thanks for plug. Shameless shameless plug advertising. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm not doing this because I want to earn more money. Really, the reason why I'm doing this is part of the proceeds of these cards and stickers will be donated to charities. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to a few. Yeah. And each launch has a theme that is inspired by said charity. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I felt really strongly to do it is because for me, like I think. The greatest commandment is to love God and love people. Yeah. 
And if God has given me these talents, I don't want to build towers. I want to build tables. Wow. I don't want to build towers of influence, trying to reach out to God, trying to get to the highest. I want to build tables where people get equal opportunity, where people mm. are able to even, yeah, like do the journey like I did, like have yeah. access to God and healthy community like I did. And one way that I know how to do that is art. Yeah. And all these charities and NGOs already exist to fight for all these causes that yeah. these people, you know, are so passionate about. And the best way that I know how to help them is, you know, donating. Yeah. Yeah. That's so beautiful. And I think that there's nothing wrong um, starting a, a, a business and like earning money from it as well, like mm. and giving a portion to charity because, yeah. um, I mean, we have to eat, we have to work to gain our money as well. Yeah, like steward our finances as well. Rent. <laughs> yeah, as long as we honor God with our finances, like that's the most important thing. Mm. But what actually made you want to start a business in the first place? I did not want to start a business in the first place, oh. just like how I did not want to get married <laughs> in the first place. But it was this, it was a lot of conversation with God. And like, I remember in church and in services that yeah. there would be people coming up to me praying for me giving words saying like you're gonna start this business you're gonna do this and do that and it was like um prophesying over inheritance and wealth wow. that will lead to a next generation being transformed Amen. And it's things like that and honestly all the while while they were laying hands on me internally i'm going like i really don't want this god i really don't <laughs> want this jesus like pick someone else i'm an introvert like i don't want to talk to people yeah, here i'm lord <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and it's very much the same thing about me not wanting to get married and a yeah. journey of me finally getting married. Like, I thought I was an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship type. I'm so sorry, my English. It's okay. <laughs> One more thing to add to the blooper reel. I wasn't naturally charismatic. I wasn't very conversational. I didn't know how to market myself. Yeah. I was like, I thought I was the worst candidate ever to start a business. Aww. But again, like, it was really what God said. Like, hey, if... I'm a God that chooses the foolish to shame the wise. I'm yeah. a God that chose Moses to stutter to speak to the Pharaoh. Yeah. And it's not up to what you can do for me. It's up mm -hmm. to what I already did for you. Wow. And it's really just about trusting God and obedience. Obeying, yeah. Yeah. Um, Submitting. The, I remember this one incident where I was like really going at God at it. And I was like, God, oh, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> and he told me like, hey, if you choose to live another life if you choose to not go at this not say yeah. yes to this i will still bless you yeah but if you choose this i will bless you and use you to bless others wow yeah i think sometimes the cost of disobedience is someone wow. else's miracle wow yeah yeah and i read this quote like i think it was Havila cunnington or someone that posted it recently like someone is just waiting for your yes to god yeah yeah because yeah. your obedience to god it ultimately i mean your the money you're going to use to support like charities and everything like the projects that you're working on that's going to bless someone else and imagine if you had that fear of like stepping out into mm. it yeah and yeah. and what advice would you actually give to people who are wanting to start out something but they're kind of scared wow okay i'm still in the same boat i'm still kind of scared so this is advice i would tell myself <laughs> so way way in the future if you're ever scared and want to quit you remember this moment and you watch this back again yeah um don't chase dreams chase jesus wow and then the dreams will follow wow don't idolize um, your dreams and don't idolize don't ever idolize a word don't ever idolize a prophetic word that someone wow. gave you to the point where you think god will do anything to get you there mm -hmm. where you think like no this is the thing i need to be serving where god will just god will just serve me and god will open all the doors and i don't need to do anything like there's all this toxic mindsets that come with idolizing a word yeah so number one don't chase dreams chase jesus and yeah. then the dreams will follow wow secondly um your disobedience can cost someone their miracle. Wow. God can choose anyone else to do it, mm -hmm. right? Like, but I believe that for every Esther, every Queen Esther that doesn't take the throne, the enemy will send a Jezebel. Like, I really do believe that mm -hmm. because there's so many seats of influence in this world yeah. and there are only two kingdoms, right? Yeah. So if we are not stepping into places of influence, the enemy yeah. will send someone else to do it. Yeah. And a lot of the times, like, we do this thing where we do this self-doubt thing where it's like, mm -hmm oh God, like, I don't think I can do that because who am I to do it? And we think it's humility, but anything that exalts itself against what God says over you mm -hmm. is pride. Wow. Yeah, even if it sounds like humility, even if it's like in a form of self-doubt, like I do think and I do believe 
that one of the most tolerated sins in church is pride in wow. a form of false humility. Wow. Yeah. That I, is so deep. I really do believe that because if you really believe what God says, if you really honor His word, if yeah. you really believe that He is who He says He is, and therefore you are who He says He is, mm -hmm. then who are you to say, no, God, I can't do it. Yeah. No, God, I shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, that's right? so incredible. I feel like I can relate to that because like, um, in, in the past or so, like, I, I had a previous YouTube channel before this that I was doing vlogs and Is all it Shira Vlogs? Yes, it is. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <and> nice. <laughs> I, I don't do vlogs on that channel anymore. Um, that was when I was in college, you know, like, showing my memories. I, I did make a few, like, Christian videos here and there, but, like, it was mainly, like, vlogs and... I think I watched I, a couple. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and but in, in the past, I would say like I had a, I would say a more greed, greedy mindset. Mm. Like in the past, like my heart with God was, was also like half-half. It was more like I'm thinking about the numbers. I'm mm. like, okay, how much can I gain from this? How much can I build from this, you know? It mm. was more about like, yeah, me building t my own towers. And, and it's like um, God had to take me through this entire journey of like humility as well, humbling myself before Him. Mm. And also like coming to God's presence and learning that ultimately it's about the heart it's about mm. god's heart for it like right now i'm doing this i'm not looking at the numbers anymore i'm looking at the individual lives that are being touched like if i yes. put a message out here like about you and mm. your your the struggles you had about marriage and like family and everything right and like so it will touch and and speak to someone who has that similar struggle mm. so right now god has changed like my entire like mindset mm. to like no longer so focus good. on like Thank you. Like, thank God. <laughs> like, no longer focus on, like, the numbers so much. Yeah. I'm Every time I build, I'm like, oh, a life is being touched. A yes. life is being touched. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. It's yeah. it's about the purpose behind it and the calling behind it. And I even have it on my on my screen, like, my phone screen saver <laughs> now to remind myself, don't focus on the numbers. Focus on the purpose, the yes. calling, what God has told you to do, the hearts that God has told you to reach rather than the statistics, everything else. Mm. Yeah, because, I mean, we look at statistics just to measure to see like how um, a video performs just to look at like the performance of right? it and analyze yeah. and see how we can improve mm. but at the same time we shouldn't like focus on it mm. like it, our ultimate heart should be for God's people and for God's kingdom and I think um, yeah God has shown me as well that like us Christians we are actually called to be in the pillars of influence um, mm. in, in the world like like as a Malaysian, like how, how are we supposed to influence and where's our calling into like the seven pillars of influence. So um, if you Google it, you can see there's seven pillars of influence. There's news, there's media, there's politics, the government, um, mm. there's uh, education, there's religion, like um, business. There's all these like... I, I, What's the seventh one? Yeah, it's set, what? Seven. News, yeah. politics. Yeah, I, I don't remember all seven, but okay. but it's all, um, you can Google it um, and I can link it below as well. But but there's basically seven pillars of influence. And I remember a pastor pre um, from back at home preaching about this like many years back and it didn't even click in my head until like recently mm. that like, as Christians, we're not supposed to let these pillars of influence like influence us. Like if we're in the business world, if we're in the media world, if we're in the in the government office, you know, wherever we are placed, wherever God places us, we're actually not supposed to let that influence us but we're supposed to bring the kingdom of God there mm. yeah that's why like even our church the theme of our church is bringing the reality of God mm. you know um, like to, to like our world yeah. we're supposed to as Christians bring the reality of God to all these other um, sectors and influence like people mm. for God's kingdom and God's culture but unfortunately like in this broken world I think there's a lack of that I think yeah. there's a that, that's why the voice of culture and the voice of the enemy is also very very loud because mm. I feel that um, there's not enough Christian influences in the world. There's not mm. enough, like in Malaysia, I feel like we need more Christian businessmen. I yes. feel like we need more Christian governments. Yes. We need more Christian media people. We need more Christian news people. Like we need more people who are willing to humble themselves before mm. God, say yes to God's calling in all these areas of, of life, you know, and, mm. and just go forth and be like the hands and feet of, of God, That's you so know, right. like for his kingdom. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, if you are struggling with like whether or not you should start a business for God or go into that career that God has called you to do, like it's not going to be perfect. You're going to have challenges. But the most important thing is step out in obedience mm. and calling for God 
and you know make sure you're not doing it all out of your personal greed as well yes. because i firmly believe that god can exalt you and god can also humble you and we can go out into these places thinking we want to make a name for ourselves thinking we want to do all this for ourselves but if our hearts are not right with god he can humble us in one <laughs> second yes. he can take away the influence from you he can take away the money from you he can take away anything from you because everything belongs to him it's true. like every single cent we have in our wallet in our bank accounts every single blessing we have is from the lord and he can take it all away in one instant so mm. it's very very important to remember to be faithful stewards of everything that god has given us so yeah. you stepping out it's not you know like about yourself it's bigger than yourself yes. it's it's about being a faithful steward for god's kingdom yes and the thing is like i i just had this revelation like a few days ago that we are actually borrowing our lives like we're borrowing our breaths like god has given us this this life and but it's gonna fade and god has given us everything he's given us but it's gonna it's gonna pass away like when we go to heaven we can't take a single cent with us but we have to answer before God, like what have we done with everything that he's blessed us with? You yeah. know, in the Bible, it says that those um, who God trusted with little, he can trust with much. So like, don't even expect much blessing from over your life if God can't even trust you with little. Yeah. So we got to see like, how are we stewarding what we have now? Our finances, mm. our resources, our time. Are we, are we, ti- are we tithing? Are we honoring God? Mm. Are we giving things back to God? Um, you know, I'm not saying you need to go to church like seven days a week, you know, like, but wherever area you are in, be faithful in that, yeah. be faithful in that. So if you know you have a call of entrepreneurship, go for it, go yeah. for it, because we're all going to start somewhere. It's and, true. And even if you look at like um, the government, like YB Hannah Yaw, she is shamelessly a Christian and she is also in the government and she is also doing like great things that God has called her to do. But she also started somewhere. Like when she was 29 years old, um, you know, she, that was when she first started off and like she had all her struggles as well that she shared in uh, the Let's Get Real podcast. Mm. So, um, you know, we all start somewhere. So when you want to go into what God calls you to do, that doesn't mean you won't have any opposition. Mm. If you do, don't be discouraged. Pick yourself back up. Go back to God. Ask Him for wisdom. Ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom. Yeah. And surround yourself also. Like I always say this, I think I say this almost every episode, <laughs> community is community. so important. Yeah. Yes. Um, I remember you said something very profound about um, like, what was it? Midwives. Uh, yes. Yes. Share that. So my two favorite women from the Bible are named Shipra and Pua. And they are in the book of Exodus. They are the two midwives that the Pharaoh has asked to kill all the Israelite babies who were born as boys. Mm-hmm. And they didn't do that because they feared the Lord. Yeah. And for me, that spoke so much about who you trust your purpose with. Like mm-hmm. I said earlier, like so many people are pregnant with purpose, right? Yeah. So many young members of the younger generation are so pregnant with purpose. And choose your midwives. Yeah. Because if they had feared men, if they had feared the Pharaoh, Moses probably would have been wiped out. Or like yeah. so many Israelite babies would have been wiped out. They wouldn't have been a generation of Israelite yeah. men. So choose your midwives. Choose people who fear the Lord. Choose mm. people who would honor God's heart above anything else. That's right and midwives you when you're the most vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, choose your midwives. Wow. Because if not, they will kill your purpose. They will kill what you're pregnant with. That's right. Yeah. All right, Wei Wei, like before we leave, <laughs> do you have any final words of advice to share? Yes. Okay. Just one more. <laughs> yeah. I think when you were speaking about how God humbles us, mm-hmm. um, there's a verse that comes like, do not despise the chastening of the Lord for he only corrects those he deems as sons. Mm-hmm. And he humbles us because he loves us. Because wow. what you said about the heart, um, what's the point of gaining the whole world but losing your soul? Exactly. And he cares so much about our hearts that yeah. he's willing to remove everything else so that you would come back to him again. Wow. And especially those who are in ministry. Because mm-hmm. if you do not fix your heart, if you do not bring your heart to God, you yeah. will just give Christian vocabulary to your dysfunction. That's right. Whoa, whoa, that's so deep. <laughs> it's true. Because like we say about numbers, like sometimes we who serve in church, we, we worship later and we look down and see how many people are raising their hands right now? How many people are raising their hands right now? That's why it's because of me, it's because of my anointing. Mm-hmm. How many people was like sit yes to the altar call and then we look at the statistics and we think it's us yeah. when it's actually God who is humble enough to come to us prideful yeah. humans to reach his people yeah. so yeah like saying yes to God obedience doesn't necessarily always mean stepping out into the marketplace it can also yeah. mean staying in church and it can also mean serving in church yeah. and paying the price to work in church like my husband works in church and yeah. we pay the price but the same warning goes to both parties where check your heart 
Yeah, yeah. always. I think it's so important to always do like heart checks with God. Yes. Um, because to be honest, we we are not aware of our sins sometimes. We are not aware of what goes on in our heart sometimes. That we have to go like, God, okay, show me what am I struggling with? Like what's inside my heart? And that's why that's why it's in the Psalms. That's why David prayed, search me. Like mm. asking God to search me and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me to the way everlasting. I think that's such an in- incredible psalms and a prayer to pray. Like if you have no, you don't know where to start, just pray that psalms. It's in the psalms. Mm. And and like ask God to do a heart check with you. Ask God to reveal to you. And you know, when you know his voice, you know like the Holy Spirit will just give you impressions. Like sometimes he will tell you like, maybe you have pride or maybe you didn't act well in this situation or mm. maybe you should apologize to this person yes. and it's like not the things we want to hear not the things our flesh enjoys to do or hear but you know god will just show it to us yeah yeah so it's very important to spend time in communion with god as well because going to church is not enough you know like trying to um, feed yourself with other people's faith is not enough you need your own personal relationship with jesus and you have a personal relationship when with someone you're able to spend time with like there's no relationship if you can't spend time with them right mm-hmm. um and just one more thing that i'm reminded of like when people ask me like like you know like why, why are you so christian why are you so like you know religious and stuff i'm like no like when you when you are in love with someone you want to spend time with them. Like when you're in love with Russell, you want to go on dates with him. Yes. You want to spend all the time ever with all him. All the time. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So when we love God, we love Jesus, we will want to spend time with him. It doesn't make sense if you love someone and you don't want to spend time with them. Mm. And God wants us to spend time with him because he loves us. And that's when we become more like him, like we take on his nature. Because yeah. like the same way how when you love someone, you spend more time with them, you become more like them. Mm. You become, if they're, if they're really, really loving, you become more loving. Mm. If they're really, really angry people, you become more angry. Yes. You know, like, so however it is, that's why, that's why when we spend more time with God, we become more loving like Him. We become more graceful like Him. We become mm. more merciful like Him. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow, this is such an amazing session. Yes. Anyway, I'm so <laughs> glad to have had you today. Yes. Um, why don't you close us with a word of prayer for um, everyone out there who's listening wow. before we end. All right. Yeah. Let's pray. All right. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for everyone who is listening. Thank you, God, yeah. for everyone who is tuning in. Yeah. And Lord, I just pray, oh God, that even right now, that there will be such an awareness of yeah. who you are in their lives. Amen. I pray, oh God, that you remind them of their dreams, remind yeah. them of what you call them to do. Show them what their obedience is like in this season. And it's okay if it doesn't look like everybody else's. Thank you, God, that the same hand that writes our stories is the same hand that is writing theirs. Thank you, God, that you are faithful. Thank you, God, that you're kind. Mm. And I just pray, God, that in this week, upcoming week, whatever week that they're having, that they will have such a profound and intimate encounter with you that leads them closer to who they're meant to be and where they're meant to go. So bless everybody. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Yay. So guys, thank you guys so much for watching to a, for another episode of the Found in Christ podcast. You can now catch us on all platforms on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on all platforms. And we will see you guys for another episode. Till next time, bye-bye. It's so sore. <laughs> personal stylist, cameraman, and everything in between. That's right. That's that's called the <laughs> husband. No, but your left hair. My left hair. What is wrong with my <laughs> left hair? You have to push it down. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> is it okay? Yeah. My nose hair sticking out. <laughs>